Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna show you how you can perform 2D human pose estimation on your own images and video by using a pre-trained model called OpenPose. OpenPose was developed at the Carnegie Mellon uh, Perceptual Computing Lab. And if you're not familiar with uh, pose estimation, the figure below from the OpenPose research paper provides a nice graphic. So essentially the problem requires taking an input image that may contain one or more people and then identifying the key points associated with the major joints in the human anatomy and then logically connecting those key points as shown in the figure uh, on the right-hand side here. Uh, the model actually produces two types of output, uh, part confidence maps and part affinity maps. However, for the code demonstration below, we'll only be using a single person in the image and therefore we'll only need to make use of the confidence maps. Uh, which are also referred to as uh, probability maps. And we'll see how that's done further below. So just a brief history, uh, for a long time, human pose estimation was a very difficult problem to solve robustly, especially on some of the more challenging benchmark cases. The reason the problem can be hard is that joints are not always very visible. There are numerous opportunities for occlusions of one type or another, and then clothing or other objects can further obscure the image. And then there's the added complexity of not only identifying key points, but associating them with the right people if there's multiple people in the image. However, once deep learning was applied to this problem domain just a few years ago, we really began to see dramatic improvements, and it's been really exciting to see just how well these models now perform. So in this demo, we're going to be using the OpenPose CAFE model that was trained on the multi-purpose image data set. And we'll be doing that uh, using a single image, which we'll get to in just a minute. But we wanted to point out that human pose estimation is often applied to video streams uh, for various applications, such as intelligent trainers, for example. So we wanted to just start with some example results on a video clip to whet your appetite. And then we'll walk through the code for a single image implementation. But just remember that the code can easily be adapted uh, to process a video stream as we've shown in prior videos. So just scrolling down here a little bit to this um, first example, this video clip, which we're going to show, uh, was uh, processed using OpenPose, and the OpenPose results have been overlaid on the uh, video stream. So let's take a look. So all three hockey players are wearing bulky uniforms, which is a challenge, and then they're also uh, colluding each other to some extent, yet the model is performing uh, pretty nicely if you just uh, take a look at the results. It's a lot of fun to work with, and... Um, of course, we'll be uh, taking a look at a single image example, but we thought it was instructive to show you um, how exciting that is to uh, process uh, videos. So let's continue on and take a look at the rest of the notebook. Uh, so in this first section here, we're simply specifying the model. Uh, here is the uh, prototex file here, and then the um, cafe model or the weights file right here. Uh, we downloaded those already and have already executed this notebook, but uh, there are references in this notebook here for where you can uh, download these files. And then in this next section here, we're specifying the number of points in the model and the associated uh, linkage pairs here by their indices. Uh, so these, uh, each of these um, uh, blocks here refers to a linkage in the uh, human anatomy, and uh, zero starts at the head, one is the neck, two is the right shoulder, three is the right elbow, and so forth. So this is a mapping that the model uses during training, and we're gonna need this mapping to uh, process the output from the network uh, further below. And then uh, right here on this line, we're calling the read uh, net from cafe. Uh, we've seen that before in a previous video, where we just pass in the uh, prototex file and the weights file for the trained network. And that creates for us an uh, instance of the network, and we'll use that below for inference. So now we're ready to read in our test image, and we're doing that right here uh, in this code block with IM read, and then we're also um, swapping the uh, red and blue color channels here on the next line. And then these two lines are retrieving the size of the image, which we'll use further below. So let's take a look at the image. Uh, this is a picture of Tiger Woods hitting a driver from the rear view at the top of his backswing. And the reason I chose this image is because it's a little bit challenging and makes a nice example his uh, upper body uh, notices at right angles to his lower body. So his lower body is facing to the right of the camera and his upper body is actually facing the camera. And then his left arm is occluding his right shoulder. So that's gonna make things um, a little uh, more complicated. And uh, let's continue on uh, to the next section. So now we're at the point uh, where we're ready to go ahead and uh, pre-process our image. I recall that when uh, networks are trained, they're trained um, with training images that have a, a specific size and 
uh, potentially some scaling performed on them. And we need to make sure that whatever images we're using to perform inference on uh, are pre-processed in the same way. So here uh, we're setting the net input size of 368 by 368. And then uh, we're calling the uh, OpenCV function blob from image and recall from a previous video that this takes several arguments related to all this pre-processing. And then it's uh, also going to convert uh, the image into a blob representation, which will pass into this uh, set input function uh, to prepare the network for inference. So let's review these arguments uh, briefly. Uh, so this first argument is the uh, image itself. And then the second argument is a scaling factor, uh, which is the same scaling factor that was applied to the training images. So we need to um, perform that same transformation here on the input image. And then here we're just indicating the net uh, input size, which we just uh, talked about right here above 368 by 368. Uh, the There was no mean value subtracted from the um, training images, so we're simply uh, indicating a vector of zeros here. And then the uh, swap uh, red-blue uh, flag here is set to true. And uh, we're not uh, cropping, we're going to resize our input image uh, to match uh, the size of the images that were used during training, which was 368 by 368. So now we're ready to use the model to perform inference on our test image, and we do that right here by calling the forward method, and that returns for us the output from the network, which consists of both confidence maps and affinity fields. And as we mentioned earlier, we're only going to be using the confidence maps for uh, performing the uh, key point detection in this demonstration. And so for each point, we're going to uh, receive a probability map. And then we're simply going to, um, in this next two lines of code, plot each of these probability maps. And you'll see that these are color coded. They're heat maps indicating the probability of the location of a, the detected uh, key point. And so red is a very high probability. So in each of these uh, probability maps, you'll see this is the likely location for key point zero, key point one, key point two, and so forth. So remember, this one corresponds to the head, this corresponds to the neck, this corresponds to the right shoulder, and so forth. So we can use these probability maps to overlay those key points on the original image. And to do that, we're going to have to scale these in the same scale as the uh, input image. And so that's what this next block of code is performing. So right here, we're using the uh, output shape of the network, the, in other words, the shape of the probability maps and also the input shape of the test image to uh, compute two scale factors, uh, x and y, that we'll end up using below to determine the location of the key points in the actual test image. But before we do that, we're going to need to determine the location of the key points in the probability maps. Uh, so that's what we're going to do in this next uh, code block here. Uh, this for loop is uh, looping over all the key points. And for each key point, we're going to retrieve the probability map uh, from the output array from the network. And then we're going to call this uh, OpenCV function min max location uh, and pass it the probability map. And this is going to return for us the uh, location of the point associated with the uh, maximum probability. And uh, so the coordinates of the point are in uh, this variable here, point. And then once we have that location in the um, probability map uh, coordinates, we're going to multiply it by the x and y scale factors we computed above to get the uh, key point location in the original test image. And then uh, if the probability returned by this function is greater than some minimum threshold, which we set above, then we're gonna go ahead and um, take that x, y point uh, now in the coordinates of the test image and then append it to a list of points. And so now we're ready to uh, render those points on the test image. So uh, let's uh, scroll down here to our results. First, let's just take a look at the image. Uh, so this is um, the input image here with all the key points annotated on the frame. And then the image to the right is um, the same key points, but without the numbers, but with the linkages connected. So two different views of the same data, really. And um, if you take a look at this area that we knew was going to be difficult, in other words, uh, the head was at zero, the neck was at one, the right shoulder at two, the right elbow at three, the right wrist at four, it looks really nice, even though the left arm is occluding the um, right shoulder. And uh, I mean, if you go back over here to the image on the right, you can see the, the skeletal view and that looks pretty um, spot on. So 
it did a nice job of detecting the key points and, and putting them together in a way that makes sense. But let's just go ahead and walk through this code a little bit. So up here on these first two lines, we're just making a copy of the input image and one's gonna be um, called points and the other one's gonna be called skeleton. And then uh, we're gonna loop over all the points that were um, that we just created in the for loop above. And those are the coordinates of the key points in the test image coordinate frame. And then we're gonna use the uh, OpenCV circle and put text functions to draw and label those points on the IM points image, which was the um, image to the left down here. And then uh, further, we're going to uh, render the skeleton view uh, that's displayed down here to the right with this for loop. So we're looping over all the uh, pose pairs, which we defined uh, further up in the notebook. And then we're retrieving those pairs and we're gonna set those to part A and part B here and then use those as indices into the points list that we created up above, which contains the list of key point locations in the test image. And now we're simply gonna use uh, OpenCV line and circle functions to uh, draw a line from uh, one joint to the next and color code it, and then also draw a circle at the first uh, key point in that link. So, and then here we're just uh, using IM show to display both these images below. So that's all there is to it. There wasn't much code in this notebook. Uh, since we're leveraging the capability of OpenCV to perform inference for us, uh, really the code amounts to uh, a few function calls and then a little bit of um, a logic to uh, parse the outputs and, and render uh, the information on the original image. And uh, just for fun, I went ahead and um, ran the same uh, model on a photo of my son, who also plays golf. And this is a, a view of his follow through. And the model does a pretty good job. But the, I'll have you notice one thing here is that the, um, if you look over here to the right, the neck and the right shoulder are, are off a little bit for some reason. So uh, this is the head. This is point zero. This is point one, which should be right here. And uh, this is the right shoulder, which should be over here. But notice his right shoulder is actually occluded uh, quite a bit by his back. So it's almost not even visible. So it's it's definitely a challenging pose. And, um, you know, it was a lot of fun to try this out. So uh, the main point, though, is that you can um, use a pre-trained model, leverage uh, the inference capabilities of OpenCV, and start playing around with your own images and video. And... Uh, we think you'll enjoy doing this and uh, thanks so much. And that's all we wanted to cover in this video and uh, we'll see you next time.